Yes, my name's Peter Stevens, and the car that I've brought with me today is, it's a classic pre-Second World War hot rod in that it's got a Model A Ford chassis, but the body is a 1925 Model T, and that was a favorite of hot rodders because it's both lighter and less frontal area than an A, so you can go quicker when you're racing on the dry lakes in California. And the engine's a Model B, which is, it, it is derived still from the ancient Model T engine through the Model A, but the Model B, for the first time for Henry Ford, it had mildly pressurized oil system. When I say mildly pressurized, it's about two or three pounds per square inch, but it's better than little buckets on the end of the connecting rods, picking up oil and throwing it around inside. So it, it's a slightly better engine and it's got a lot of period tuning bits on it. So it's got a Winfield head, which was a early 1930s cylinder head with a higher compression ratio. Um, it's got a Thomas inlet manifold, which was a, another favorite thing because it took what actually were two of the V8 Ford carburetors. So it might be slightly over carburetor, but it was the kind of cool thing that hot rodders did. And it's got a lumpy cam, so when you start it up, it pops and bangs like a proper race car. Though it's, um, yeah, it's got kind of the right bits. Um, I've had it now about seven years. I mean, I'd had Model T's and I'd had a, a Model B. Street rods, street rods are the shiny ones with aluminium wheels, but they don't represent the classic racing hot rod, which I'd always fancied. Um, I had a couple, I had a single seat early dirt track racer, 1929 dirt track racer, and I had a 1930 um, Dry Lakes racer as well. And then I became very busy and stupidly, I sold both of them in the same year. And very quickly afterwards, I thought, oh, what have I done? You know, because I like this stuff. And then the Vintage Hot Rod Association was formed just after I'd sold the cars. So I needed something and I had planned to build something from scratch and I'd assembled a bunch of bits and pieces and I was looking for more bits. I mean, it's a funny tale because I was looking for more bits on eBay and my computer went to ebay.com, which is America, instead of .co.uk and I put in Model A Ford bits and this car came up, you see? Uh, and three days left the auction and nobody had bid on it and it was, it was kind of slightly worryingly cheap, actually. At that point, you kind of have to. Well, you do, um, th but probably so excited not paying attention. So I thought, oh, well, it ends what uh, would have been Sunday afternoon, which is Sunday morning in America, you see. So on Sunday afternoon, I went to have a look, and the auction had ended the day before, but nobody had bid on it. So I emailed the bloke and said, tell you what, I'll give you the starting money. And he said, yeah, sure, well, so I phoned him up. And he said, no, it'll, it's fine, it's good, you know. It had been a, it had been a racer, and then I think it went to a barn and it got really quite rusty. And he'd kind of tidied it up. But it went in a container. A friend of mine was bringing a bunch of hot rod bits back from America. And it arrived at Felixstowe at the docks. We wheeled it out of the container. Uh, uh, the first thing you do when a car comes from America is look for um, serious, scary spiders because often the containers have got loads of spiders in them and in the cars and under the dash. So I had been warned to really be rather careful yeah. and look around and make sure there weren't any tarantulas in there. Which sounds funny, but it's kind of what was deemed a good idea. Mm. And when I got in, it had petrol in, the battery was charged up and it started, you know. So although I'd gone over with the trailer, you know, I thought well, I'll get someone else to drive the trailer back. And I'll drive home, you know. Yeah. Yes, I do. I, I changed the engine because there was a Model A Ford engine in there which was a bit rumbly and rattly and uh, plainly wasn't going to last very long if I did some racing. So I got a Model B, which is this slightly later Ford block, and put the tuning bits onto that. And I do beach racing, I do Pendine Sands. Pendine Sands is a flat out, how fast can you go? Um, but also Romo in Denmark, which is on the island of Romo. And Romo is interesting because 
there was a there was a beach where people raced on the next island along called Fainal, and Fainal was where people like Sir Malcolm Campbell did you know 167 miles an hour a long really firm sand beach and I had done an event there a few years ago but they decided not to allow the racing at Faino, whereas Roma were delighted because, I mean, last year, 25,000 people came to watch. So for the area, you know, that is enormously good. You know, and that's a, that's a magical event, actually, it's because the beach is huge, and unlike Pendyme, where the, sa the sea comes in over the sand twice a day, so you are running in salty water. And when you get home, you can hear all this so eating away at stuff unless you're conscientious about cleaning it. Whereas Roma, the, the sand is dry yeah. and not salty, so I didn't feel so bad about running there. Uh, but Romo is like a drag race and you go off in pairs and it's just a quarter mile, but it's highly competitive, that's for sure. Oh, nice. And because I'm competitive, I love it. I mean, you can get 12 races in a day easily there, maybe even more if you're you know, not that mechanically sympathetic. <laughs> and but the other one is an event they just started last year on the beach at Wisteram near Caen in France and that's also a beach drag race and that was a really that was a nice event because people who've traveled on the ferry from Portsmouth to Caen they all turn left and then they go on holiday in France and the mayor who's a guy in his 30s wanted a way of getting people to turn right you see, and go into the little village of Wistram, which is why he organized this beach race. And he thought he might get a few hundred people. Yeah. And he got nearly 20,000. <laughs> uh, and he just couldn't believe it, you know. I, I was going this year, but unfortunately now we have to hide away for two weeks. It's not possible. That's why you're here. So none of it, well, this is, this is fairly true, yeah. Cool, well, Chad, thank you so much. Starting Good. procedure, I switch it on, then I switch the petrol on which is an electric and I start the engine okay it's a three-speed gearbox and uh, having not been round the track the first lap will be exploratory kind of it's quite noisy but that's part of the pleasure of the thing the top gear now. Okay, when you drive something like this, it feels like the car is alive. It's a very alive experience. Um, the steering is actually very nice on it. You know exactly what the steering's doing. Into top, and it's both windy and noisy. Going quite nicely here. I'm going to keep this in second gear. Makes you smile. Is the whole point of it. We should be overtaking the tractor, which is mowing the grass. That's got to be good. It, it, it's an interesting little circuit, this, because it's quite twisty, and it suits the fact that this motor has loads of torque and you can do most of it just in second gear. And there's a red flag, so this is my last lap. Fun 
experience, that's for sure. There's a bit of a pause from second into third, and then you really get going. Extremely good fun. Lots of jingling and clattering and rattling, but it's uh, it's alive at the end.